When I was a kid growing up in Philadelphia, all I dreamed about was becoming an actress on Broadway. So as soon as I graduated high school, I moved to New York City. I got a piece of advice from a taxi driver. <laughs> he said, in New York City, be like an exclamation point, not like a question mark. <laughs> and I took this advice to heart. And I started my New York journey with enthusiasm and excitement and without doubt. One of the things that was essential was finding a job to support myself in one of the most expensive cities in the world. The only problem was is I didn't have any job experience. But this was like pre-Google, so I made a fake resume. <laughs> and somehow I landed a waitressing job because I figured I'm an actress, you know, it's a rite of passage to be a waitress. And it turned out that I was the worst waitress in the world. And the manager didn't hold back from telling me so. Oh my God, every night he was like, you're so stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> And finally, I just couldn't take it after a few weeks, and I quit. And I felt on top of the air, you know, liberated. I was walking through the East Village on my way home. But then it hit me. Oh, my God, I was so lucky to have found that job. What was I going to do? And that's when I saw it. Cafe Cento Sette. It was a quaint little place, the type of place you would find down a beaten path in Florence. And it had these huge picture windows and little twinkling lights around them. And I peeked inside and there were only 20 or so little tables lit by candlelight. And I walked in and I was feeling much more like an insecure question mark than a confident exclamation point. And there was this gorgeous mahogany bar and I crossed the restaurant and there was this woman standing behind this bar and she looked very regal. And I said to her, um, excuse me, uh, may I talk to the manager? And she said, I am the manager. <laughs> and I said, look, my name is Erica, and I am the worst waitress in the world. But I'm a really hard worker, and I promise you, if you just show me, I will be the best waitress. She looked me up and down, and she said, be back tomorrow. Bring pens. <laughs> so I showed up the next day, and under her guidance, I became the best waitress. <laughs> One time, Liza Minnelli was getting trashed in the restaurant, as she did, does, do's, why not? And she was chain smoking cigarettes, which was illegal, and I was the one who was able to talk her down and get her to stop smoking. Um, the Village Voice came in and wrote about the friendliest waitress in the East Village, me. <laughs> And I'm semi-proud of this and not so proud, but I could sell the last piece of the crusty old cappuccino mousse pie to anyone, even amongst gorgeous, fresh, new pies. And so I just loved my Cento Sette family. But after four years of working there, I had started feeling like I wasn't pursuing my dream fully at all, really. I had so much anxiety and nerves about auditioning. I was really holding myself back. And when I did go, I just wasn't landing the auditions. Um, and so it was this one really busy night at the restaurant, and people were lined up around the block. And there was this wiry professor type of guy who had been sitting at one of the tables for hours. And we really needed the table. So I politely asked him, like, oh, I'm sorry, I need to turn the table. Like, it's so busy. And he did not like this. He started yelling, how dare you? You, you? How dare you treat me like this? I hope you're not expecting a tip and, like, just being really rude. And I, I just snapped. And I was like, that's it. And I slammed open the door to the restaurant. And I said to him, 
you need to get out of here. We don't want your money. Get out. And he did as I said. <laughs> and he crossed the restaurant and he walked out and I was standing on the stoop of the restaurant with my back to everyone in the restaurant when all of a sudden he started to choke me. I could feel his hand around my neck and everything was in slow motion. I could see Third Avenue and the cabs and the cars were blurs and the passerbys. And then survival instinct kicked in, and I hauled off and I punched him right in the gut. <laughs> and he jumped back, like startled, and he just took down Third Avenue. And everyone was around me, are, are you okay, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm okay, I'm okay, I just need a cigarette. <laughs> and so I, standing outside of the front of Cafe Centosete, and I'm smoking my cigarette, and I'm crying, and I'm talking to the sky, saying, what have I done? I've blown my dream. I have not made it as an actress. What's going to happen to me? When I heard this little voice, excuse me, excuse me. And I turn and I see this little old woman in a house dress and slippers and she's looking at me intently and she says, you must be an actress. <laughs> and I said, yeah. <laughs> she said, I used to want to be a dancer. And at that time, there were these midnight booze cruises up and down the Hudson. I danced till my feet were dead. And then she looked at me more intently and she said, but then someone discouraged me. Don't let anyone discourage you, you hear me? And she walked off. And as she was walking off, she continued, you hear me? Don't let anyone discourage you, especially the CIA. <laughs> Those motherfuckers. <laughs> and so the next day, there had been an opportunity that I had my eye on to audition for a very esteemed theater company. Um, that thousands of people would have been auditioning for and I put my headshot and resume in and it turned out that I actually was accepted and I had one of the most amazing experiences of my life down there at the theater. I'm still friends with the people, two of the women that I was in plays with down there for 25 years and I became a star. <laughs> in my mind and for that crazy little angel. I didn't let myself be discouraged. And that night I held my head, I held my head high, I walked back into the cafe, like the exclamation point that I was. Thank you. <laughs>